Uh, last time I was here, actually, I was still uh, uh, here in a, in a different role, um, speaking uh, when I was running an um, online payments business, uh, then called uh, Moneybookers. Uh, you might know this Skrill Group today. The topics we had then were actually quite similar. So we talked, we were you know, very uh, fortunate to work with some of the most exciting companies, some of them uh, here in the room. And we talked about uh, conversion, talked about growth, talked about how we're going to make their business uh, successful and actually grow it internationally. Now with uh, Facebook, I'm in a similar situation again. I'm very privileged to see some amazing company, uh, some of them that will you know, disrupt industry like we've just heard here, uh, and some of them that will you know, change the way we look at te technology. What struck me when I joined about a year and a half ago at Facebook was that we always didn't do a good job in explaining what Facebook really is about. It was all about fans and friends and you know begging for likes and in the end what it comes down to just a big big platform with amazing uh, targeting opportunities and as we have all you know digital companies uh, here in the room I thought I'm going to share you know, some of my thoughts and our thoughts I would like to help you help you grow uh, in a new world. Last summer, we've seen something really amazing. Suddenly, people started in masses really come to us and signing up through mobile and uh, using us through the mobile. And this is not necessarily in, uh, in Asia or in Africa we'd expect it. This is uh, US and Western Europe. And what we're seeing here right now, we're at a historical point in history again. The last time what we've seen is when you know, media consumption actually changed in such a profound way as we have actually this year was when my parents were at the age of my two little, uh, two little girls. They were toddlers. It was in the 1950s. This is when TV overtook radio in terms of time people actually spent using that medium. This is again what's happening this year. This is stats from eMarketer that says for the first time in history, time spent on digital, it's yours numbers, going to be bigger than TV. That's amazing. And as you know, a lot of industries have actually been built on you know, that trend when TV started. The whole industry started. And tons of companies, even today, still think in terms of you know, reach, go TV. Uh, and this is where I'm going to reach my consumers. Most of you, are, of course, are smarter today and live in that digital world. Mobile is already making up 50% of that nearly. And this trend is just going to accelerate. Look at this. Over the next couple of years, you know, the mobile growth you see is, uh, is growing exponentially. Fortunately, at Facebook, we've been, um, uh, how to say, early enough uh, to discover the trend. Not without, you know, we also made our mistakes. We first, you know, built on HTML5, discovered that, you know, our service is actually very slow. Uh, loading very slow and not great, so we started uh, building um, native apps on Android, iOS, and so. And um, we've seen that, fortunately, engagement on mobile has been multiplied. Uh, we've seen that, in terms of usage, customers now spend nearly double as much time with us on mobile. So we actually see a much higher engagement. And what do they do? They actually, they, um, our users, they take out their phone and check um, the news feed. They check the news feed about uh, 10 to 15 times a day. It says 14 times a day. Actually, when they check the phone, I think some studies say uh, you take out your phone 100 times a day and check this stuff. I'm, I'm definitely doing that. Um, they, uh, they check Facebook 14 times a day, and they spend a lot of time on that platform. Now, of course, you know Facebook is big, right? We have those big numbers, maybe uh, you know, billion, uh, 1.2 billion now. Um, but you might not care about this. You might care about if you have a business in the UK, we have today 20 million people just on mobile here in the UK. We're going to care about the UK. You say, I want to reach women in the US playing games just on iPad. And we have 3.8 million of that. Or you want to launch a business in Brazil. You say you want to get the early tech adopters. We have uh, 600,000 of this. So it's actually all the people that matter to you. You can reach them. And on the mobile device, you can now reach them every day and every time. And what do they do? They discover 
on the newsfeed what matters most to them. Now, the important thing here is discover. It's not search. I'm not constantly searching. I'm a big fan of search. And of course, we also have our you know, search function. But what they do, they scroll the newsfeed, and they see the things from the people that matter to them, and the things that are being referred to them, suggested to them. And on that feed, you're not competing with your competitor. You're actually competing for eyeballs with my best friends. And that's a new challenge. What you see here is, this was the old Facebook, like people still uh, think about it, those uh, funny, uh, uh, tiny little ads on the right-hand side you know, that no one really sees. What we have now in feed, where you're competing with my friends, you have full screen ads. That's even on mobile. So if you look at the mobile device, it's not that tiny banner here on the bottom where you need to click and you don't really know what you're clicking. So it's an experience where you can scale internationally, of course, across all devices. But when people ask me, what's social media, right? Stick a cat on it. This is, and I talk to a lot of, uh, lot of businesses when talk about Facebook. It's, yeah, you know, talk to my social media manager, right? What do they do? They beg for likes. You know, you post a cat, you post a funny puppet, all of those things. Um, but they don't really help you drive conversion to your business. They give you a couple of likes, a couple of friends, but this is not what Facebook is about. So you have to create really engaging content, something that distracts me from the content I see and the updates I see from my friends, my family, from the businesses I care about, to actually get the attention. And it has to be cool, it has to be creative, and it has to be done by the best people in your organization. You just don't give it to the intern and say, do a bit of social media. This is a platform that has a bigger reach here in the UK than you know, a lot of TV channels combined, bigger than print. Right? You wouldn't give your intern the, um, you know, the uh, designing your TV ads or your, your big online campaigns. But this is still a big rally today, uh, but it's also a big chance for those of you, of course, that uh, love to engage to actually learn how it's being done. Because you know, I have to admit, we always haven't been the easiest to work with, and our formats always haven't been, let's say, the most, uh, yeah, the, the least complex, to put it this way. What we see is that, and I've just read some stats from Flurry, that they said in billions of minutes, 80% of the time spent on mobile is actually on apps. Yeah? So in the App Store, though, you have, I think, on, uh, on uh, on iOS, you have now 900,000 apps. On, on Android, a billion apps. You're there. You need to be found. And the problem is when you're found, I think 26% of the apps only get uh, started once. 66% get uh, used one to 10 times. So it's not only that you have to be discovered, and then people have to download you, you also then have to re-engage with your customers and manage the lifetime value of their customers by getting them to open the app again and again and again. What we've done is uh, we've now built a couple of uh, ad products out there. And you know, forget that social stuff. It's great that you have you know, friends. And when you get some ad with a social context, you know, what it is, it increases conversion. So it helps you actually deliver a better campaign uh, you know, with better results for less money. But in effect, all it is, it's landing pages. Very simple. Landing pages, like you've built landing pages you know, for, uh, for your affiliates like uh, five or 10 years ago for Google. On the mobile phone, it's like rolling landing pages. And you have to do the same rigor in optimization and making sure you actually optimize the conversion to drive traffic to your site. And you have a range of those here, particularly if you look at the uh, mobile app install ads. So it's not only that you can drive your apps to actually get customers to install, you'll also see new ad products that then have a deep link into that app so you can actually re-engage with them again and reactivate those customers. Because this is what you paid for to actually get them to use your app, or you didn't pay for them if you have it viral, but you still may need to make sure you have an active customer base. Now, to make it specific, I just want to show, of course, you can target all around demographics. The thing is, we actually know this is a person that likes um, 
I don't know, like uh, South Park because they've told us, not because we're thinking they would like it and we know actually their age and we know that they are male and not female. So this is, of course, you can have all the you know, standard uh, demographics. You can also have a retargeting for guys that came to your checkout and then didn't, um, it didn't convert. The most interesting thing I want to share with you is actually what gets me excited is custom audiences lookalikes because that's really fundamentally going to change how you approach the business. What we do with custom audience is you can take your existing customers. Let's say you have, I don't know, 10,000 customers and you acquire them either through us and you have your app customers or um, you know, email addresses. And what you do on a third party server all hashed, you kind of match how many of those 10,000 customers are on Facebook. Maybe it's 9,000. What you can then do is you can directly target those customers and only talk to those customers, so not having all those spillovers and, you know, and pay for all the other customers that you don't want to reach. What you can also do is you can exclude them and only target the others because you want to um, just acquire new customers. Or you can actually slice them and dice them into your most interesting segments. So you could say, out of those 9,000 customers, 1,000 are my VIP customers. This is where my A customers, this is where I generate the highest lifetime value, and you can only talk to them to make sure that they purchase again. Taking this a step forward is lookalike audiences. What you can now do is you can take those 1,000 VIP customers and create lookalike audiences and see which other people on our platform share similar attributes and expand that and maybe have from your 1,000 VIP customers suddenly you have 100,000 or maybe a million and you can only speak to them. And then of course what it comes down to like you know in any performance marketing to do it's you know optimizing the bidding, optimizing your creative, not just giving your intern you know, to post uh, funny puppet pic uh, puppy pictures so once a month or so, then it really the work starts in optimizing it constantly. So what you've seen is we are actually at the beginning of, um, of a big shift towards mobile. The eyeballs are shifting towards mobile and this is where the people are going to spend the most time. Fortunately, we have a platform where people actually do spend a lot of time and we have some amazing targeting capabilities to, uh, to actually talk to them in a very efficient way. My ask to you is please, as you have one of the most engaging properties you know, on, uh, on, on the planet in that newsfeed, and if you have one of the biggest reach platforms with the best or one of the best targeting opportunities, don't give it to your social media manager. This should be your topic. This should be owned by the investors who are actually going to make money off that growth, should be owned by the CEO or the CMO. And then it's just the beginning. Thank you very much.